Hey, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Kali Linux in VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. Before we get started, I just want to quickly look over the system requirements for this installation. First, you're obviously going to need Windows 10. You're going to need roughly about 8 gigs of RAM. You can do it with less, but I recommend 8 gigs. For hard disk space, you're going to want approximately 40 gigs. Again, you can do less than that. 20 gigs is fine, but for it to have enough space for everything you need, I recommend 40 gigs. You're going to have to install the VirtualBox and the extension pack. And you're also going to need the Kali Linux ISO file, which we'll be downloading from their website. And just like all our other videos, everything that you will require will be linked in the description below, as well as timestamps so you can jump back and forth if you get lost in what you're doing, and then you can continue from there. As you know, not every installation goes through smoothly, and I try my best to answer all the comments that are below. But if I'm not able to get to it and you're stuck and you need a place to go, I've added a forum to my website, and that address is forum.geekrar.com. You can go in there. The community is great. If you have any questions, you can post them in there, and usually somebody responds fairly quickly. So with that all the way, let's go ahead and get this installed. So we're going to begin at our desktop of Windows 10 with VirtualBox already installed. Now, if you haven't installed this already, I'm going to put this video in the description below. This video will walk you through the steps of installing VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC, as well as installing the extension pack. So now that you have VirtualBox already installed on your PC, we're going to go to Google, search for Kali Linux and download the ISO file. KaliLinux.org is the official website. We'll just click on this and we'll get here to the main page. And if you scroll down, it just uh, does a little bit of explanation about the tools and what you can do. Uh, if we click on the download link here in orange, we get to the download page. We have two options here. We have the virtual machine uh, download as well as the bare metal. Because we're going to be doing a raw installation of this, we're going to be selecting the bare metal option. And then if you scroll down a little bit more, we have multiple versions available. We have the 64-bit, the 32-bit, and the Apple M1. Because we're using a 64-bit version of Windows, we're going to be using this version. And then we can click on the download link here, and then it'll download the ISO image file. Now, wherever you're downloading this, you just got to remember where you saved it, because we'll have to point to it later as we install it inside VirtualBox. Now, with it being completed, we can close out of our browser. We can now launch the VirtualBox Manager. And here we go. So. I already have some other operating systems installed and I'm going to be creating a new one. You may not have anything on your left hand side. I'm going to click on the new button now and we're going to be creating a new virtual machine and inside the name we can just type in the name of the operating system. So we'll just type in Kali Linux here. Below we have the machine folder. I'm going to leave that as default, but if you want to store your virtual machine somewhere else, you can change the folder that you're in. In the type of the operating system, we're going to leave it as Linux. And because this is based off of Debian, we're going to go down to the bottom and select the Debian 64 bit, then click on next. Now for memory size, you can get away with four gigs of RAM. Uh, what I'm going to do is because I have 16 available on my computer, I'm going to try moving this up to eight gigs. Now you can actually just maximize this all the way out. Just make sure you stay in the green zone of the meter and then click on next. And for hard disk space, we're going to leave the default as create a virtual disk now, and then we can click on create. And the next option is the hard disk file type. We're going to be leaving it again as a VDI, the virtual desk image, and we'll click on next. Storage on a physical disk, we're going to leave it dynamically allocated. And in the file and size location, we're going to leave this in the default folder. You can change the folder if you want. Uh, we're going to be leaving mine as default. And below we have the available hard disk space that we want to allocate to this. Now, for the minimum requirements, they do say that you should have at least 20 gigs of hard disk space available. I'm going to go up to 40 and put 40 in here. Okay, and then you can click on create. So now that part is complete. And what we want to do is select the operating system over here on the left, Kali Linux, and then click on settings. We're just going to be taking a look at this and making a few modifications. Under system, we have the base memory as eight gigs of RAM, which is fine. We can leave that as is. In processors, there's only one CPU available. I would max this out in the green space as much as possible. So I'm allocating four. Acceleration, there's nothing to be changed here. Uh, down here, we can enable EFI. Most operating systems have this available now. And then under display on the left-hand side, you can increase the video memory. It's at 16 megs right now. A lot of people go up to 128. Inside controller IDE, we want to select the disk below and then the little disk symbol on the, on the right hand side and select choose a disk file. 
Now this is where we're gonna to go to the download of the ISO file and select it, and then you can click on open. So this is where it's gonna find the ISO file to install it. On the left-hand side, you got audio. We're not changing anything here. Same with network, serial ports, USB, uh, share folders, and user interface. We're gonna be leaving this all as default. So you can click on okay. Make sure you have Kali Linux selected and then click on the start button to begin the installation. Okay, you'll be prompted for a startup disk. So in the drop down list here, you can click on it and you wanna make sure you're selecting the Kali Linux ISO out of all of them and then click on start. Okay, so the first option is to continue with the graphical interface. That's the one that we're gonna be selecting. So you can just select it and then hit enter on your keyboard. You'll see some black test scroll up on the screen. This is completely normal as it goes into the wizard. So the first thing that you're gonna be prompted here is to select your language. Uh, we're gonna be using the default English here. So we can select that and then click on continue. And then the location, I'm gonna leave it as United States and then click on continue. And then for the configuration, the keyboard, I'll leave the default American English. And then it's gonna start mounting and installing some files here. So now it's, the next step is to provide a host name and the host name is gonna be the name of this computer on the network. And this is what other computers will see uh, when it's trying to identify it. So we're gonna call this one uh, GeekRar, you can give it any name. Domain name, we don't have anything specific to put in here, so we can just click on continue. And now we're gonna be setting up the user profile. So we're first gonna give it the name of the account and I'll just type in GeekRar here and then click on continue. And now it's the username. So this is gonna be the user that you log in with. We can leave it the same. And here we go, we're gonna type in the password. The password we'll have to type in twice. And then you can click on continue. And configure the clock, we'll leave it as Eastern and click on continue. So now we're partitioning the disks and because this is a virtual machine, we can use the entire disk, which is the first option. And then we'll be using the first option here as well. And next we have um, all files in one partition. So we can use that as well and click on continue. And now that we're done, we can finish partitioning and write changes to disk. So this last option can be selected and then we can click on continue. So we're happy with everything that we've done. We can write changes to the disk. So now it's gonna be extracting files. This process might take a few minutes, so again, I'll be jumping ahead. So we're nearly done the setup here, and it's gonna be asking for the desktop environment that you'd like to use. By default, they have the Kali Linux uh, desktop environment selected. You can switch it over to Genome or KDE. They also have a couple of tools here as well. Uh, these collections of tools that are provided by Kali are excellent tools if you're gonna be doing intrusion prevention or things related to the network. I recommend just leaving them selected and then click on continue and then we'll just finish up this installation. So we just jumped to the end. This is the last part of the installation. You can just click on continue. The installation can take about a half hour, maybe longer. It really depends on the specs that you're using of your PC. Once you get to this point, it's just going to reboot and it's going to load back into the login screen for Kali Linux. So I just expanded the screen so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, it's still loading up right now. It might take a few seconds here. So we have a few options right off the bat. Uh, this is for the system startup. We can select the first option to continue with the boot up process. So now we have the login screen and you can type in the username and password that we entered when we created the operating system. So you're gonna type that in, click on login, and it'll load up the desktop for you. Okay, and it's just loading up the desktop right now. Looks like everything's done. And just for the best viewing, what you'd wanna do is just go up to the view menu and then say full screen mode. And then this will allow it to click on switch and it'll allow it to occupy the full screen. And then you can start using Kali Linux however you want. All the network tools is pre-installed in the operating system. If you just click on this menu over here, you have them all listed and, and you can begin using the operating system like you would if you fully installed it on a PC. That is how you install Kali Linux on a Windows 10 PC using VirtualBox. So for everything you need to get this installation done, I'll make sure that I put links in the description, including a link to my blog where I walk you through all the steps, step by step, in case there's anything you wanna copy and paste in there. If you have any questions, please go ahead and put them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you wanna see more installation videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.